So I've been playing a lot of Overwatch competitive recently, a lot more than I usually like to play. And overall, you know, I've been enjoying the games. I've been switching around my roles, trying to figure out what I want to play this season. Do I play Reaper? Do I play support? Do I play tank? What do I go on? What do I do? You know, kind of hard, just like everybody. But as I was playing, I've been finding a lot of DPS mains. I know, uh, something that we would never expect. But within that, I've been seeing a lot of them that are stuck at their elo for a very long time. I look at their profiles, 200, 300 hours, just stuck on a certain DPS, or mainly just stuck on a huge variety of different DPSs. And I feel like that can't be a problem for a lot of people. A lot of people get into the game, they insta-lock DPS, and then they play through the game. No matter how much the enemies counter their DPS, no matter how much, you know, the game just not going well for them, whatever's going on, maybe they have four DPSs in their game and no support, no matter what's happening, a lot of these players will just continue to play their character that they feel like will probably, in the long run, carry them up the ladder, and it doesn't really happen for a lot of people. So as I was doing that, and I was, I was really just thinking around today, I was thinking about some of the tanks that you might want to try to pick up and play if you are a DPS player that wants to try to rank up. And in particular, I have one tank. Now, a different tank I could kind of talk about is Roadhog. Of course, you can get a lot of damage on him, a lot of pick potential. That's pretty nice. Uh, but the person I want to focus on today is Zarya. And I don't really know why not that many DPS players play this tank, and many players in general. I do see some Zarya mains, and some Zarya players, and some people that will go for this character, but not really way too much. Now I know that she can have some problems against shields, and especially if the enemy doesn't spam a lot, uh, can be kind of hard to get up some of your ammo, or I guess some of your charge, but other than those main problems, I feel like Zarya can really fit a lot of people's playstyles, and can actually win you a ton of games. Now one of the most important things about Overwatch that I'm going to say is, really just of utmost importance is of course a having a good team comp and picking a tank will greatly increase your team comp um but b using your ultimates well and having a good ultimate now if you're playing in esports ultimates i feel like lose a little bit of value because there's a lot more outplay potential people do just a lot more stuff but when you're playing competitive having one of the best ults in the game that just wins you a fight uh let's say you're zarya for example you have your graviton and the opponents have <laughs> almost any other ult in the game you should probably win that fight if you get at least three people in there. And that's something that I want a lot of people to kind of think about. You can just win a lot with this character, um, simply from team fighting and getting just a lot of damage out like that. And that's a kind of nice thing that I feel like a lot of DPS mains also get used to with their characters. A lot of DPS characters have super good ultimates. Remember, this one does too. Another thing that I feel like could be a little bit more appealing to a lot of DPS mains, and to some other players I guess as well, is the fact that Zarya does a truckload of damage for being a tank. I'd say again, she's not really a main tank, she's more of an off tank, but if you have insane tracking from playing McCree, Widowmaker, Tracer, I guess even kind of Genji, Symmetra, you know, Moira, Mercy, whatever, if you have good tracking, you can just deal a ton of damage as this character. Of course you have to get used to, you know, walking pretty close to the enemies, trying to get up your shields, trying to get some charge up, so that your damage actually, you know, does something. But if you can get around, you know, 30, 40, or at least 50% charge, which isn't even way too much, just like one or, you know, one and a half bubbles, that can just give you just enough damage to take out really anybody that's going to be trying to dive your backline, protect them, which a lot of people kind of need, and allow you to just go in on the enemies and start balling on them. I feel like the thing about this character is that she really supplies just about everything. Maybe not perfectly, though. I know that she can't really block way too well, and I know that she can't really burst people as quickly as a lot of DPS characters, but I feel like in a lot of situations where you're a player that gets into a game, you see that there's already two DPS picked, you see that there's already two supports picked, and one tank, and you have the decision between a DPS and a tank, Zarya can kind of be a middle ground, where you still are tanking, you still are helping your team like that, you can still throw those save bubbles on your teammates, you can still get really, really nice ultimates, you can still do a lot of damage, um, but you can also still make your team comp pretty well. And, I guess, there you go, that's kind of all I'm really going to say about this character. Overall, I feel like Zarya is just a character that, if you haven't really tried her way too much before, and you feel like you're stuck in your elo, she might be a good choice for you. Now, of course, one tip that I can really give about this character is make sure to not really use your bubbles preemptively. Only use them when people actually start taking damage, or when you walk a little bit too far up, and then, of course, you're about to take some damage and go for it. Um, I guess you can sometimes use your bubbles, like if someone's super far out, put it on them, and then the opponents won't try to hit after them. But that's kind of the main thing you have to keep in mind, because that's the one thing that I guess doesn't really account for what a lot of DPSs have to do. Other than that though, just play pretty close up, not even super close up, because she's actually pretty far ranged, and I feel like you're overall just going to do pretty fine. Anyways, as always guys, thank you all for watching, hope you guys enjoyed, I was just randomly thinking about this, and thinking about, you know, how could a lot of different DPS players 
maybe do a little bit better in some of their games after they're just getting stuck from bad team comps and really just whatever. Anyways, as always, guys, thank you all for watching. Hope you all try this out at least sometime. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day.